Hello and welcome back to my channel. In today's review, we're going to be taking a look at the brand new Transformers Studio Series Leader Class Dark of the Moon Optimus Prime, also known as the Jetwing Optimus Prime. As always, we'll take a quick look at the packaging and then we'll take an extremely detailed look at both the figure's robot mode, Jetwing pack, annular ring trailer and all of this figure's accessories. As always with the packaging we have an awesome CGI render of Optimus Prime wielding the Jetwing pack. It does appear that they're using the ROTF model, however it does look just as good nonetheless. It states that it's from the Studio Series in figure number 44 and the side of the packaging has a closer up image of that CGI render with the Autobot insignia at the top. The back of the packaging showcases the figure in both his robot mode as well as his vehicle mode and also includes a brief bio. Optimus Prime blasts into battle using his Jetwing tech to take out the Drilla tearing through Chicago. It also states that Jetfire is compatible and it also shows the figure's backdrop. The other side of the packaging has a closer up image of Optimus Prime's CGI render, states that he is a leader class and that he is in fact figure number 44. Now turning to the figure's backdrop, this is by far my favourite backdrop from the Studio Series so far as it is the Driller from Dark of the Moon just completely destroying the buildings of Chicago. The design team have really taken a lot of attention to detail with this particular piece. You can see all of the buildings just being completely destroyed by the massive Driller and you can also include the figure into the diorama for a more dynamic display option having Jetwing Optimus Prime coming for the driller much like the movie. Turning to the most basic of the accessories here is Optimus Prime's Ion Blaster. This is the exact same sculpt as we saw with the SS32 Optimus other than the fact that it actually has less paint apps than before but nevertheless looks really awesome next to Optimus however I wish they included his Dark of the Moon shotgun. The figure also includes his Energon Axe this is nowhere near as painted as nicely as it is on the packaging, but it is great for this particular Optimus as you can recreate the scene where Optimus Prime completely decapitates Megatron, recreating that final battle. This can also be inserted into the figure's hand exceptionally easily, and it's a great inclusion as this is one of Optimus's most noticeable accessories. The figure also includes Optimus Prime's shield from Dark of the Moon, however it has one major design flaw in the sense that it doesn't actually have a handle for Optimus to hold on to, which essentially makes it extremely difficult to pose this particular figure with the shield. As you can see here, as it is a plug, it can only necessarily port forwards on Optimus's forearm, making it look as if though Optimus is holding it as some kind of gun, and this was never a feature of the shield in the movie so it looks completely ridiculous when displayed with the Optimus. If you move the forearm armor down and rotate the fist down it does look a lot better from the front however from the side angle looks extremely ugly and what I tend to do is lift the hand up and just rotate it around much like how Captain America wields his shield and this to me is the best display option that you can get out of Optimus Prime whilst wielding his shield. I really wish they had included the handle as it would have made posing a lot better for this particular figure. However, displayed with other accessories, this particular Optimus looks great. Turning to another accessory that the figure comes with, of course Optimus comes with his Energon sword. This has been remoulded from the previous version and is, and is a completely brand new sculpt in the sense that it actually has a handle so that Optimus can hold it much like a sword, much like we saw in the Dark of the Moon film. Now turning to a pair of more heavy duty firepower, here is Optimus Prime's Jetwing Cannons and these two have been sculpted and detailed incredibly well, however the major flaw on these particular pieces is that there are no paint apps on them whatsoever. Despite this, the sculpting is really nice and you can make out various different cannons as this particular weapon was moulded out of different weapons in the film, allowing you to get so much detail into this particular piece. Unfortunately, the underside is hollow, however from the front you cannot see it whatsoever. Now turning to the biggest accessory, here we have Optimus Prime's Jetwing Pack. Now this also has been detailed incredibly well, however much like the cannons has no paint apps on it whatsoever, making the colours extremely drab and dull. I really wish that they had perhaps put some silver paint apps as the detail on this particular piece is really, really nice. Similarly to the cannons, there is also these ghastly hollow spots which are actually visible as this is what you see from the front. There is a bracket section which is on a hinge joint allowing you to implement it onto the figure. The jet wings actually have some articulation, they can rotate forwards and backwards as well as hinge backwards due to transformation and the wings also have some slight articulation. Now in terms of implementing the jetpack onto Optimus Prime, you're going to want to rotate into the back and hinge these gas canister sections up just like so. As you've probably noticed, these are on a lot more securely than the previous SS32 version and this is due to the fact that Hasbro actually pinned these joints to prevent them from falling off much like was a common issue 
on the original version. This greatly improves the build structure and makes the transformation a lot more enjoyable. However, once you have lifted these sections up, you can flip this back panel down in order to prepare Optimus for the jetpack and these two tabs here are essential for combining the Jetwing to Prime. Speaking of the Jetwing, as you can see here, there are two tabs on this base section here. These are what will plug into the gas canister sections and there is also a slot that you're actually going to want to slide over the top of Optimus, just like is demonstrated in this video. Once you have slid that section over the top, that will lock it into place and you're then going to want to tab the gas canister sections into the tabs to solidify the connection. And there we have Optimus Prime wielding the Jetwing pack. All we need now is these two blasters implemented onto the figure. And to do this, it is, it's really simple. You just want to peg the blasters into the hands. The hands don't actually meld into the hollow spots, much like I originally suspected. They do just sit on the top. But nevertheless, once they are plugged in, here we have the Jetwing Optimus Prime fully combined and looking absolutely awesome. The details on this particular figure look great and when you've got it all aligned up and tabbed in correctly, it really is a massive piece. The wingspan on this particular figure is enormous and completely blew away my expectations. Even on the back of the figure on the gas canisters, there is also some detailing. However, once again, there is no paint apps on it whatsoever. And there is a plank section on the back, which can look slightly unsightly. But once again, this is on the back of the figure. But due to the light weight of the Jetwing pack, the figure is also able to balance incredibly well, allowing you to get this figure in a lot of dynamic poses that wouldn't be possible if the Jetwing was a lot more heavier. Now, in order to give you a size comparison of both Optimus Prime and the wingspan of the Jetwing, here is the leader class Dark of the Moon Optimus Prime. As you can see, the jet wingspan completely pops out of the side of the Dark of the Moon Megatron, really showcasing the wingspan's height. The figure is also ever so slightly smaller than Megatron, due to the fact that this is actually the Voyager class Optimus Prime, and there has been no adjustments made to the height of this particular figure. Comparing this Dark of the Moon Optimus Prime compared to the Voyager class 07 Optimus, as you can see, essentially they are the exact same figure, just with ever so slightly different paint apps and a brand new abdomen section. There has been no amendments made to the heights whatsoever and I really must say that I do actually prefer the look of the Dark of the Moon Optimus due to the simple fact that he has the abdomen section. I do actually prefer the transparent clear plastic windows on the original version though as the silver ones don't necessarily look too great and I really think that if they were going for a realistic look they should have been more transparent. The ab piece has been detailed incredibly well and I really like the gun metal paint apps that have been applied to it. As you can see, further differences on this figure is the fact that the new version actually has the orange fade on the front of the hood, which was absent on the original version, making this newer version a lot more screen accurate due to the advances in paint apps. Now turning to what could potentially be the main event of this particular set, here we have Optimus Prime's annular ring trailer. Now this is the first time that we've ever got an official annular ring by Hasbro and I must say that their first attempt is definitely really well executed. This is by far the most accurate representation that we've gotten of this particular trailer from Dark of the Moon from Hasbro and I really do like that we've finally been given a more accurate representation over the original Ultimate Optimus Prime which just had the trailer turn into a wingspan. This particular piece has been detailed incredibly well and is very faithful to what we see in the movie. I find it incredible that they've actually managed to turn a square-like trailer into a circular ring much like the film. It really is awesome. The interior detailing of this circular ring is fairly basic and mainly consists of different ports and plugs for you to implement different weapons on in order to store them to create a weapons armory for Optimus, much like we saw towards the beginning of Transformers Dark of the Moon. Now, in order to showcase how all of these different ports work, here we have the sword. Now, as you can see, the sword actually has a cutout that will plug onto the darker grey sections of the trailer as there is designated spots for all of the different accessories to port onto. The sword stays on there incredibly stiff and is great as it won't fall out of the ring. As you can see, there are two slots on the axe. The second slot is mainly for the trailer mode transformation. However, the bigger tab is actually to plug into the annular ring. And as you can see, can be inserted just as easily as the sword and has a really sturdy connection. Taking a look at the ion blaster, there is that big cube-like section that was apparent on the original version. However, the slot that is cut out for this particular one is extremely loose and really doesn't tab the cannon in too well. I tend to just take the handle and plug it into one of the ports as the connection by using those is 10 times more sturdy and a lot more visually appealing than if you were to use the cube-like section. The shield also has a big plug on the back that will just simply port into the trailer just like so. And there you have the majority of Optimus's weapons imported onto the annular ring. 
You can also include the jet wing cannons onto this particular piece and they can be inserted once again via a plug and port. However, I haven't as of yet located a place where you can actually plug the jet wing pack onto the trailer, which is such a shame. Once all of the weapons are implemented into the annular ring and Optimus Prime is positioned within the center, I think that the look looks absolutely incredible and it's very faithful to what we see in the movie. This really does look as if though it is some kind of armory for Optimus and it's great that we're finally getting this particular look in the studio series line and that it has been executed a lot more accurately than it originally was in the 2011 Dark of the Moon toy line. For a size comparison, here is the trailer compared next to the Voyager Prime. Now if I had one criticism with this particular piece is the fact that I wish it was ever so slightly larger, however seeing as this has to fit inside a leader class box, I can kind of understand for the reduction in scale. However, if they were going for movie accuracy, the annular ring would have had to be ever so slightly bigger, but it definitely doesn't look too out of place when compared next to the Voyager class Optimus Prime. Now turning to the transformation of both the trailer and the jet wing, essentially you're going to want to collapse this bracket section and then rotate the jet pack to the back of the figure. You're going to want to collapse the intakes just like so on both sides and then this will then allow you to flip the jet pack section over and straighten it out in order to prepare it for the trailer mode. You're then going to want to collapse the wingspan in just like so and lift this section out. This will then allow you to flip the wings in so that they are now aligned with the top section of the trailer and there are actually a set of tabs and slots that you're going to want to connect in order to solidify the connection and make the wings stay in their proper positionings. This will also help to aid clearance when you plug this onto the main base of the trailer and with this done we now have the jetpack ready for transformation. Turning our attention to the main section of the trailer, what you're going to want to do here is untab these bracket sections. So literally just pull them out of their circular confinement and once this is done you're going to want to rotate them around just like so, roughly to a 90 degrees. Repeat the same process on the opposite side and begin to collapse the trailer in. As you can see there is a tiny tab that will actually port into the bracket section in order to keep shape of the trailer. This will ultimately help you for transformation as you'll have some kind of guidance of how the trailer is supposed to look. Once you have this done on both sides you're going to want to turn your attention to the underside of the trailer and hinge these wheel sections up just like so. Once this is done this will in fact expose a big port that you'll actually want to plug the shield in in order to help aid weapon storage. Once this is pegged in, you're then going to want to furthermore plug in the rest of the weapons. So taking the sword, once again there is that tab that will plug into the slot on the sword. T snap that into place just like so, and then repeat the same process for the axe. Utilizing both of the pegs this time, there are two tabs on the inside of the trailer which you're going to want to align appropriately and snap into place just like so. Once this is done, you're going to want to turn your attention to the rear end of the trailer. Now this particular piece is actually on two hinges that will form the top lid of the trailer. You're going to want to angle this all the way up, allowing for clearance by moving the doors out. Once this is overlapped, you can then align it with the rest of the sides of the trailer. So snap those sections in just like so, which will then ultimately allow you to seal the doors. So just snap either side of the doors in just like so. Once this is done, you can utilize the jet wing pack that we transformed earlier. And you're going to want to put the wings in first just like so, and then align the rest of the trailer up with this back section. Snapping that into place, as you can see, there are lots of teeth on this particular piece that will plug into ports on the sides of the trailer. You're going to want to align these and make sure that these are tabbed in all securely. So snapping them all in just like so will ultimately form the top section of the trailer and make it a lot more solidified in order to help keep its shape. Once this is done, we near enough have the trailer fully transformed. However, there are two plugs on the underside, which will actually help to store the big ion blasters that we use for the jet wing. These will simply bug into these ports on the underside of the trailer and once these are done we have the trailer fully transformed and ready to be implemented onto the cab section of Optimus Prime. Speaking of Optimus Prime, I have in fact decided to skip the transformation of this particular figure as it is exactly the same as the SS32 that I reviewed and transformed earlier on in the year. As you can see, the paint apps on this particular figure are really nice and the orange slash yellow fade on the front of the truck really helps to make it a lot more movie accurate. The silver paint definitely looks a lot better in truck mode as opposed to how it looked in robot mode and the tyres have all been picked out in a silver paint. The Iron Blaster can also peg into the top cab of the truck, much like we saw on the original release. Now taking a look at the details of the trailer, this too has also been detailed incredibly well, however it's just begging for more paint apps as the paint applications on this particular piece has been kept to a minimum. As you can see we've got a really nicely sculpted in Autobot insignia with loads of rivets and bolts all over the trailer and that hexagonal line that we see reminiscent on all of Optimus Prime's trailer. The refrigeration unit has been picked out in a nice blue paint 
and once again has a super awesome autoport insignia. I really wish Hasbro had put some paint on this particular trailer as it could have looked so much better. There is also no paint on the tail end sections of the trailer. Considering that they've actually detailed the rear lights, it would have been awesome to see some extra paint, but once again, there is no paint apps whatsoever. The wheels are also skimp out as only two sets of the wheels are actually working and the rest of the two are faux. This is such a shame as I really wish both sets could move, however it does not affect how the figure rolls in truck mode. Talking of truck mode, implementing the trailer onto the truck is really simple. There is this big port that will just plug into the trailer hitch of the SS Optimus Prime. You can just simply snap it into place just like so and it does roll reasonably well, however due to my smooth surface it doesn't roll as fluently as it could do. I have tested this trailer on the Bumblebee Movie Optimus and the trailer port for that figure is just too small so it will not plug in whatsoever but looks great along this Dark of the Moon Voyager Class Optimus Prime. So that is my review on the Studio Series Leader Class Optimus Prime. Personally, I think that if you have the other Optimus, then necessarily you won't have to go out and pick this particular figure up unless you're really into the trailer and the additional accessories. If you didn't pick that other figure up, this is definitely the best way to go as I really like the abdomen section on the piece and you get the jet wing as well as the trailer and so many more accessories than you did with any of the previous versions. Also, if you're worried about combining this with Jetfire, Jetfire also comes with an additional abdomen section that you can swap out the abs on this in order to make this compatible with that leader Jetfire figure. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please let me know down in the comment section below and be sure to let me know what you thought of both the figure and the review itself. Until my next review, I'll see you then. Thanks for watching.